What is a seemingly mundane question you can ask somebody that will tell you a lot about their personality? Did I just see you digging through the trash? I didn't know we were playing Stardew Valley. F you Alex. I hate you anyways. What would you do if you won the lottery? For me, it's a non-invasive way of listening to people's attitudes on finance in general, and also how they feel about the rich. Yes, this is a brilliant question. When I was newly dating my ex-boyfriend it was around the time Super Lotto hit 1 billion dollars a couple years ago. We were both in lottery ticket pools and discussed what we'd do if we won. His answer mortified me. It included how, if he were married, he'd divorce his wife and travel the world on a yacht doing drugs surrounded by hot women. Big red flag for me. Wow. Of all the things that is definitely something you don't say to your girlfriend. I always say that I'd turn into an absolutely abhorrent degenerate if I were to suddenly get a cash prize like that, but in reality I just say that because I get a laugh out of people's reactions from that. I don't even know what I'd do, probably just quit working, find a music teacher and play bass and video games all day long. First things first, I'm going to get a financial advisor, I'd have no idea what to do with that much money, and I don't want to end up a mess. Same here. My first thought about winning the lottery is how do you go about finding a reliable financial advisor when you've just won the lottery and everybody is suddenly offering financial advice to you? What book would you like to live in? A really, really big one. Practical. I see. Wikipedia. The offline version. This is a tough one for those of us who like dystopia and historical fiction lol. Yup. I literally just thought to myself, well all the books I read are nightmares. Do I pick the least terrible? L.O.T.R. but not near Tom Bombadil. He's up to some secretly dark sh- What was the last thing you did that gave you childlike joy? My 14 year old asked for a longboard last spring. I'd said no before because I figured that it'd be something I spend a few hundred bucks on that she'd try once, not be good at right away, and never touch it again. It wouldn't be the first time. After being locked up for two months with quarantine I figured why not, it gets her outside and maybe something she'll enjoy. At that point I just wanted to get her out of her room and off her phone. I'd never seen her work so hard at something she wasn't good at right away. After two back to back six hour days of practice she started to get the hang of it and asked me if I wanted to try. I couldn't even stand on a board when I was a kid, but as an adult I just got it. I wasn't on it five minutes and I said, I need one. We left right then and picked one up for myself. We cruised all spring, summer, and fall. Not only was it great for bonding, I hadn't felt that kind of joy since I was little. A moment I'll never forget. Can't wait for the snow to melt. Oh my gosh that is awesome. First, I'm impressed she practiced for so many hours. Second, I love that you got it and wanted to go get one so you could do it together. Listen to Rainbow Connection by Kermit the Frog on Spotify last Friday. Does playing with my son count? He's a child who frequently exhibits childlike joy, of which I am symbiotic parasite. That seems kinda like cheating at this question. What are you having for dinner tonight? It's really cool to hear about what people like, what their culture is like, because food is a huge part of that, and generally just how they live. Expensive or cheap? Quick or elaborate? Adventurous or safe? Ham? Mustard? Maybe some baby carrots if they aren't bad yet. I might try to make that garlic bread but it's been in the freezer for like 3 years now. Does Mike Wazowski blink or wink? Depends on how he's holding his mouth. You are truly one of the great thinkers of our time. Got this one in an interview once. How do you go about eating a muffin? Learned a lot about muffin anatomy that day. It was a bakery after all. Ahaha. I knew a guy at uni that sat at his desk. Naked, and just slammed his face down into him like a dog eating out of a bowl. Guy was weird af. I knew a guy. Sure you did. Naked muffin eating man. Typical final stage teenager. Dart go on. How is no one addressing the nudity part of this anecdote? My father-in-law went on a job interview about 10 years ago and absolutely nailed the interview. As he was being shown around the office a high level person in that company who normally wasn't there just happened to be there that day. After they were introduced he asked my Phil what kind of animal he would be. My Phil said he panicked and picked bear. He's a bigger guy and the other guy said something along the lines of that's a little too aggressive maybe this isn't the job for you. 
so he didn't get the job but I guess it worked out because he's got a pretty good job now and if I was him I wouldn't want to work for someone who hires people based on what animal they think they would be. Bullet dodged. That sounds like an awful place to work. Same thought. If a company would kick you out for everything good but one minor choice, I don't think working there will be happy. Good boss know the strength and weakness of the colleagues. One failure do not necessarily mean bad. The right answer was, I'd be a parasite that lives in your eye and eats away your optical nerves. Oh you sound like you'd be good in management. The guy should have asked the follow up question, why did you choose the bear? Cause a bear is not always associated with an aggressive animal but can also be associated with a tough looking guy who really loves cuddles and is a sweetheart. The explanation says more about a person, than a one worded answer. This actually applies to a lot of answers. Bears literally sleep all winter and then just eat blueberries all summer, right? Wow, that is so effed up. That guy's a shed. I bet the asker picked bear himself, and didn't want two bears in the same office. What superpower they want? I know there are more powerful powers that could get me wealth or whatever but man teleportation would be dope. Can travel the world but always sleep in your own bed and never need to book a flight. Never need to use a public restroom. Easily visit family. Only take road trips if I want. Can live and work anywhere. The rest of life could be normal but it'd be great. Work? Bro teleport in and out of bank vault. I love this question because this girl I knew in college had just the best answer. She said the power to fill things and after I looked at her kind of funny she said you know like filling my bank account with money. Filling my belly with spaghetti or filling the enemy's bladders with urine. Bro you should have married her. The ability to change probability. You could theoretically control anything. What's the probability I'll ace this test? Make it 100%. What's the probability of me winning the lottery? 100%. What's the probability I'll finally catch Alice cheating on me? 100%. In the long run. Success only matters if there was a possibility of failure. You'd eventually start forcing bad outcomes just to feel something again. And now you're a super villain. I had a TA ask me in a get to know you activity what my vision was for a perfect world. And I said round lol. That would have been awkward if your TA was a flat earther. Are you in favor of homeowner associations? This is a good one because everyone, who is familiar with them, has such strong reactions. Yeah I knew a guy that was a co-worker in a different department. Apparently he was on the hoa board in his neighborhood and loved it. He was a total a-hole at work so I knew that he terrorized his neighbors. Hard no. Okay hear me out. I live in a 20 story 100 year old apartment building. There's an hoa because something has to manage the operations of the building. We don't give a f what you do in the apartment, but we'll make damn sure the fire alarms and elevators run. We'll also keep the gorgeous art deco common areas in pristine shape, make sure things are clean, and that the utilities and garbage are taken care of, otherwise, do what you want. That's the only type of good hoa I can think of. Fav question I heard in an interview. What would you do if you came home and found a penguin in your freezer? It ends up not only being an icebreaker, but a good personality tell. Is the penguin dead or alive? African penguin or European penguin? Name him Pen Pen. Prepare for the third impact. Call the local zoo. What are the alternative answers? Feed it a fishy. New pet. Exotic dinner. Paint pinnator. Dance partner. Forbidden lover. Target practice. Fun new display piece after a bit of at home amateur taxidermy. Super realistic head for a fursuit. Really ineffective disco ball. Pen holder. All you need is a little imagination. Do you prefer night or day? As a kid, what was your go to selection from the ice cream truck? Disappointment because we were too poor to get ice cream from the truck. The cheapest thing they offered because my dad insisted on getting me something even though I knew we couldn't really afford it. But it made him happy to get me a treat. Eater thanks for all the awards. Folks, I feel like I should celebrate with an off-brand Otter Pop. Ask them what they like to cook for breakfast. Does coffee count as cooking breakfast? Asking for a friend. A vanilla soy latte is technically a three bean soup. Where were you the night of the murder? Which one? I'm going to need you to be more specific. What soup they like? Vanilla soy latte. What is a seemingly mundane question you can ask somebody that will tell you a lot about their personality? You and OPRFing genius. My husband used to work for Bed Bath and blah blah. He told me part of his job was to put carts away. 
he said that was his favorite part about the job, wasting time walking around the parking lot finding carts and putting them away. He got to be outside, chill by himself, not have to deal with other worse tasks etc. Of course this story only came up after I gave him some sh for not putting the cart back one time. This story was his elaborate rationale for not putting a cart back and to prove he was in fact a nice normal compassionate human. Normally, a fastidious cart returner, I started to leave my cart, thinking I was actually being nice and even more compassionate than ever before. I probably only did it 2-5x until I realized, he's just an a-hole, who has now made me into an even bigger a-hole. I now get to think about how much we are both a-holes in our own ways every time I return a cart. It's not a single question but by the second or third date with a guy I would ask him to go bowling, as it turns out there's many ways to play the game. Do they take it too seriously and get competitive or angry if they don't do well? Does he act disinterested or bored of the game? Do they try to teach me how to play or do they just try to be goofy have fun with it? Do they order two pitchers of beer and get totally smashed? In my opinion you can learn a lot about a person by the way they approach bowling. This isn't Nam. This is bowling. There are rules. What if a guy just effing sucks a at bowling? Because I totally do. But I own it and still enjoy it. If you will still have fun and not be a grouchy competitive a-hole about it, then that's great. What's your favorite dinosaur? In my last year of college, I took a prehistoric history class and was loving it. I, a history major, commuted by light rail to school and would end up spending the hour or so on the train congregating with other history majors. One day, I asked this group, what's your favorite dinosaur? Most of the people gave answers like velociraptors or that they hadn't really been interested in dinosaurs since they were kids, which was fair enough, but one guy said, I don't believe in dinosaurs and that the earth was 6000 years old. This was a guy that was studying history, for the sake of teaching children history, and he was denying that most of the earth's history didn't exist. Despite learning otherwise in the classes he was specializing in, I lost a lot of respect for him that day. And now, having a favorite dinosaur is a barometer test of mine. In a job interview, ask your prospective supervisor how much vacation time and sick days they took last year. This is great because both extremes take pride in their answer and so will answer honestly. The no low vacation boss is proud of how hard she or he works, but really it's bad if they don't take time off. They are coming in when they are sick, they are not recharging by taking vacation, and the expectation even if unstated is that their staff should follow that example. You'll feel guilty every time you call in sick or take vacation time. You want the boss who says I always take my vacation time and encourage my staff to as well. I called in a couple times last year when I came down with a cold. Good boss, have you ever had a negative reaction when you asked this? I can see a scenario where the prospective supervisor is a little private about this. Could it be seen as too personal of a question to ask? I'm not playing devil's advocate or advocating to not ask. I'm actually curious as someone who's hoping to be interviewing for positions in the near future. If you want to play it safe you can ask how many days a year on average the employees here take off. One of my standard job interview questions is tell me about something you like doing that you're good at. I don't really care what the answer is. I just want to see passion, effort, and creativity. Tell me what you're good at. Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Rolls no. I'm glad you asked. Pulls out campaign notes. PHB. Blank character sheet. Three friends. Pencils. Dice. Matte. Dry erase markers. Cheetahs and Mountain Dew. Well, I got things I like to do, but I'm not good at any of them. I don't really care what the answer is. Phew. Thank god for that cause my answer's going down on your mom. F you sure see. My girlfriend's dad always uses one interview question that makes or breaks a possible hire. Why are manhole covers round? The goal isn't to know the answer it's to show that you are willing to critically think about a problem before you say you need help. Because pipes are round. Because people are roundish. Because circles possibly use less material than squares. Because they are super heavy and if they are round then they can be rolled on their edge. Do you put the cart back when you're done shopping? I put my cart away, but seriously, whether someone puts their carts back really shows you what they think about rules. 
social norms, and whether they will follow them when someone isn't looking or judging them. It's really interesting and it's called the shopping cart theory. Is this a real theory? If they say no, walk away from this person. They are a monster. No don't just walk away. That's really rude. Be a decent person and return them to the corral. Do you sleep with your socks on? Yes or no? Do you have read it? Ha WTF who told you that? No I don't have read it. Don't really know what that is. What is that some sort of chat room? Who told you that? Let's talk about something else. The only right answer. Alternative phrasing. How do you judge people as fast as possible? What's the last thing you did for the first time? Well now I'm having an existential crisis because I can't think of anything. Don't feel bad. It's really not the right year for that question. Wrote that sentence. Mine was pee black stuff off the under rim of the toilet bowl. I just started reading the Wheel of Time series. Board stocks. I read that as board socks and spent a bit of time reflecting on how a grown adult, presumably, could exist without ever having board socks. I came to terms with the situation and decided to move on. Then saw the comment below. If dogs wore pants, would they wear them on all four legs, or just the back legs? My sons and I had an ongoing debate over this five years ago. Then we moved on to if a shark smoked, would it smoke in its gills or its mouth? Law. Depends on whether it's addicted or just trying to look cool. Grilled cheese sandwich. Or a taco who wins in a fight? Grilled cheese. But only if it's a fair fight. If it's prison rules. I'd take the taco. That's pretty racist. But correct. Yeah like jazz. What is the airspeed velocity of an unlatent swallow? If they know. That will tell me a lot. African or European? Their favorite color. In so many ways if they tell you without hesitating. It means they must have probably thought about it before. And it must be a color they really like. That makes them feel at home or makes them happy. Whenever I meet someone and they tell me their favorite color it becomes a part of them to me. Asking about why something ended. Be it a past job or a relationship. You learn a lot pretty quickly about someone. IDK about this one. A-holes usually twist the story to make them look like the victim and leave out their mistakes. 